Once you've found the fixed points, the natural next question is how stable they are. To understand this, we need to go back to our favorite linear dynamical system, x dot is equal to a times x. And for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to just say that x is two-dimensional. So there's only two dimensions in the state. And a is thus a two by two square matrix. Uh, the reason for that will be obvious in a little bit right now. And I understand that it, didn't, it doesn't have to be, but it helps with visualization if, we, if we're only looking at two dimensions. Let's say that you have gone through the trouble of finding the fixed points by setting this equation equal to zero, and you've come up with your fixed point, x, f, p. And what that means is that when you take the state and you set it to x, f, p, if you pop it through this equation, you're going to get zero. Right, the state isn't going to isn't going to be updated from that location. But the question to ask is when you're not at FP, how does the how does the dynamical system behave? Does it move you towards FP? Does it move you away from FP? What happens at all points not at the fixed point? And this, the question of stability, fixed point stability, helps answer that. Let's say you move an infinitesimally small space away from the fixed point. Will you go back to it? Or will you run off into some, some infinite space because the fixed point isn't stable? You may have heard of a term called an attractor. An attractor is a fixed point that will draw, draw states outside of that location back to it. Now, it may, probably doesn't surprise you then that the behavior of this fixed point is determined by this A matrix and properties of the A matrix. Specifically, it's related to the determinant of A. And we know how to generally calculate that, right? That's the diagonal in the two by two, at least is the, di the main diagonal minus the off diagonal, but it also is equal to the product of the eigenvalues. Similarly, it's also related to the trace of A. The behavior of these fixed points is related to the trace of A. And that is actually the sum of the eigenvalues. And so it's probably no surprise to you then that if the behavior of the fixed points and the stability of the fixed points is a property of A and key properties of A are things like the determinant of the trace, and those are directly related to the eigenvalues, that the eigenvalues, identities of the eigenvalues, uh, have a lot to say about the behavior of the fixed points. And if you came to that conclusion, you would be correct. Now we can actually take a look at this in much more concrete terms and look specifically at how the properties like determinant, trace, and eigenvalues determine and control the fixed point behavior. This is a Poincaré diagram. It will tell us, at least for two dimensions, the full behavior of fixed points. And so you can see there's five major sections to this map and each of them corresponds to a different type of fixed point. There's also fixed point behaviors that are along these lines as well that help us understand what's going on. So for example, if the trace of A is zero and the determinant is positive, then we are in a situation where you have a center stable fixed point. What that means is that if you are not on the fixed point, but somewhere off, what you will do is you will rotate and oscillate around the fixed point as you evolve over time. Similarly, if you're over here, where you have the trace of a negative and a positive determinant, but you are, you are uh, above this discriminant line here, then you're gonna end up with a spiral sink right, a fixed point that is stable, and if you are off of it, it, you will slowly spiral around and around until you collapse into the fixed point. Similarly, if you are on this side of the discriminant line, right, where the trace is negative and the determinant is positive, then you will end up with a sink where you will just exponentially fall into the fixed point if you are not on it. Now, these are written in properties of the determinant and the trace. You can also look at this map 
with the same sections as a function of the eigenvalues because again we told we we mentioned that the eigenvalues are related to properties like the determinant and the trace and since we're only talking about a two-dimensional system this gives you all of the potential options that you can have in two dimensions. And there's only a maximum of two eigenvalues that you can have in two dimensions because a full rank two dimensional matrix only has up to two, a full rank two dimensional matrix has two eigenvalues. Well, it's potentially two distinct eigenvalues. Now, if the eigenvalues are real, then you are below this line this discriminant line, All right? What that means that the discriminant is that, is that, is that portion under the, the radical of the characteristic polynomial. And what this is saying is that anywhere below this line, below this curve of the discriminant, the eigenvalues are real. So here, eigenvalues real. And here, the eigenvalues are complex. So if you know the eigenvalues are complex, you're already only in this space. If your eigenvalues are real, then you are somewhere down here. Okay, so that helps you to determine whether or not you're in a spiraling situation or a non-spiraling situation. If your eigenvalues are complex, you are spiraling or oscillating in some fashion. If your eigenvalues are real, you're simply falling directly in an exponential fashion, either falling in or pushing away out. Now, if your eigenvalues are real, but they're both negative, then you are in this regime of the map and your behavior of your fixed point is a sink. That's called a stable node, right? Or an attractor. On this end over here, if your eigenvalues are both greater than zero, and your eigenvalues are real because again, we're below this line, then you have a source, right? One in which anywhere outside the fixed point, you are going to explode off into infinity. If you think about what eigenvalues mean with respect to the characteristic polynomial, when you're describing e to the, e to the, e to the eigenvalue, this actually makes sense, right? E to the positive number, is going to be big, whereas e to the negative number is going to shrink and decay into zero. And that's why your behavior falls into these sinks or sources. Now, you fall under this regime down here if your eigenvalues are of opposite signs. If one is positive and the other is negative, then you are below this line over here and you have, you have the behavior of a saddle point. That leaves us with just these two regions over here to define. And you can probably guess what these are because we are, it, we know what that, our, that our eigenvalues are complex here, which means they're com complex conjugates of each other. That means the imaginary components have to be opposite signs. And so the only thing left to do and think about then is the real component. And if you think about how the real component was set up here versus here, then you have the same situation. If your eigenvalues are negative and complex, then you have this mapping here and you find yourself at a spiral sink
Whereas if your eigenvalue, the positive component of your eigenvalues, uh, if the sorry, if the real component of your eigenvalues are positive, then you're going to find yourself with a spiral source, and you'll be in this regime over here. And that's it. Those are the only identities that you can have. You've either got positive or negative eigenvalues, and they are either real or complex. And if they have opposite signs, then you find yourself at a subtle point. Right? Note that you can't find yourself in a situation where you have opposite signed real eigenvalues, uh, opposite signed complex eigenvalues, because those are not complex conjugates. So there's no negative dip on this side to, to plot. But this is it. This then will tell you the behavior of your dynamical system as it relates to the stability of your fixed point or fixed points.